Hey guys, see if anyone can hear me. Hey, Darielle, can you hear me? I got my earbud in. Just want to be sure you can hear me. <laughs> can you hear the song? <laughs> hey. Awesome. Awesome. Can you see my link, uh, my Zedin's link in the, uh, the little description part? <laughs> yeah, cool, cool, awesome. Um, can you click on the Zedings link, okay? Hey, Julian. Awesome, what's up, everybody? Um, I've got a little um, prezzo for us. So, yo, yo, brother! It's um, a Zedin's link. It's in my little description for this little live. If you go there, you can click on it. And um, I've got a little little uh, visual stimulus for us to go along. Hey, Rebecca, this is awesome. How fun is this? <laughs> Amazing. This is a thrill. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Yeah, can click on the link, awesome. Yeah, so I've got my Zedin's uh, link there for you guys. You can just click on it. And um, I've just got, yeah, a little uh, visual slide for us to follow along to. Um, I'll just put this down. Yeah, cool. Um, this is amazing. How cool is this? This is so fun. Uh, let me just take this music and just turn this off. Um, welcome. So uh, my first question in my little, my little thing is um, just how is everybody? Hey, hey, that's my question. Like, how are we all going? Um, what day is it? We've got, uh, it's Thursday. It's Thursday today. Who doesn't know what day it is? No, <laughs> totally red. Hey, Jesse, brother. Yes, this is amazing. So, um... Yeah, so I've just got my Zedin's link up there for you guys. If you want to click on it, then you can kind of follow along. Um, oh, hey, Mars. How are you, girl? Amazing. This is incredible. A Prezzo Live going as well with this just to give a bit of vis visual. But my question is just how, how are we, people? Did we have a down day, a good day? Like, what was today like? Um, for me, I had a great day. Um... I woke up, I had an amazing meditation. I've had a really good day. Um, I've had a bit of a turnaround this week, which has been um, awesome. And um, yeah, I've just been feeling that, feeling the turnaround, feeling it more this week. It's been a challenge for, for me um, and for our little family, our little household here. I don't know about everyone else's experiences, but um, you know, we've had, the main challenge for us was just finances because um, of the change in the working climate. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're staying positive, keeping the faith and all that. So how are you guys? Like I'm just looking for comments to just see ah, how everybody's going. Um, yeah. So if you want to jump on my zines link, you can, um, otherwise let's just get going. So I want you to grab a paper and pencil just to scribble down some stuff. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through a little bit of a thought process. So my, my thing was, you know, ideas on to improve your ISO experience, right? Your ISO life, our isolation life, our COVID-19 life. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run us through some, some little things to think about. I'm going to run us through some little, you know, thought processes and I'm going to throw out some nuggets some strategies, some ideas, some things that might you could pick up maybe use in your life that you might enjoy. So buckle in. So my first little thing is um, to grab a paper and pen and I want you to just 
think about and write down and you can comment in the section in your life right now, what are the things that are going well? So what's going well for you? I'm just gonna get my little thing up. Awesome. Cool. So, um, yeah, what are the things that are going well? So one of the things too, I think, um, just earlier when I was asking how everyone's going is, I think it's important to just give yourself some love. Like if you're here and you're watching this video, I mean, come on, you're amazing. And you're, you're doing things to put yourself in a good position to, to be happy, to get through this, to find the positivity, like that's awesome. And I think it's important just to give yourself some love, give yourself a bit of a pat on the back. Um, you know, you're doing great. Like this is crazy. This is a very unique time in the world and you're doing great. If you got kids at home or no kids, you have a job or no job or things that are happening or whatever's going on or you've had a health scare and things like that, like there's a lot of moving pieces and a lot of uncertainty. You're doing great. So I just wanna say that. Wow, what a time. Give yourself some love. Receive that love from yourself and that compliment because it's important to, to see the things that we're doing well. Like we're doing some things well as people. You know, there's so much kindness going on in the world and like I'm sure you're taking proactive th you know, steps to make your life better and that's great. So that's just a shout out to you guys, all right? Um, so I want you to think about um, what's going well. So. So for me, um, what's going well? So this is, this is something too that you can add to um, your nightly routine. So when you are writing a little list right now or putting in the comments and you're just, you're just going through what things are going well, you're identifying what things are going well. So like um, for me, things that are going well would be um, like my morning routine, my nightly routine, they're, pretty, they're like really ramping up and really making a difference in my life. Um, I've started joining my wife in her CrossFit in the afternoons. That's going really well. It's really just helping me stay in positive. Um, I'm keeping the momentum. Like I'm still out there and talking to people and, 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 and you know, um, making things happen. So like there are some things that are going really well. I've got great relationships with my family. So like what's going well in your life? And something, this is something that you can add to your nightly routine. So what you can do before you go to bed. So you're making this list right now. These are the things that are going well in my life. It might even be something that happened today, right? Which is ideal for at night. So when, before we go to sleep and we're laying down, we're just thinking, we can scroll through the day and we can literally just look for those top moments, you know, one, two, three moments in the day that, um, that really stand out as something that was great. Um, something that made you feel loved, something that made you feel wonderful. And what you can do is just replay that, that moment or those moments in your mind and feel the feelings and think the thoughts and feel the feelings and replay them um, before you go to sleep as, yeah, look, this was awesome. Like I had this time uh, with my, you know, my, my pet or I did this or I did that and that really helped me. And um, my wife's just walked in. <laughs> um, so, I just lost my train of thought. So, uh, so what, what that's going to do is when you, um, when you're looking, when you're going through your day and you're thinking those top things, you're falling asleep thinking about those top things, right? And you can wake up, you're like, yeah, right. It's just a really cool little momentum thing to get going at night and helps us to focus away from what, what's going wrong or what didn't happen and all that. All right. Um, so that's cool. So th that's just a little thing. So what's going well? So I want us to think about that. Um, so what's happening next? I'm just going to move us over to the next one. Okay. So if you're watching my Zedines, if you just joined us, you can click on the link and I have a Zedines link and that'll just bring you up to my live presentation. So there's just a bit of a visual for you as well. I'll get a little poll later. Um, so what we focus on is where our energy, our energy goes. So we, we know this, right? Like we know, we've heard this, we've heard this countless times, you know, and this is something that we have control over. So we think about, um, 
you know, the whole saying of where your focus goes, your energy flows and your results show, right? So as our brain thinks about something and we can literally tell our brain what thoughts we want it to have. So we have control over our brain. Sometimes I think it can feel like we don't have control. It feels like our thoughts are just taking over and they're just, we don't have control over our thoughts and we're just spiraling into stress and into anger and madness and all this. Um, but here, here's a little, here's a little, here's a little trick. So this is what I do. Um, I learned this from my coach is if there's a thought that comes in my brain and I don't like it, meaning a thought comes in my head and it makes me feel disempowered or I start feeling bad or I start feeling sorry for myself or um, I start feeling angry or something, right? And I think about this thought in my head and I just tell my brain, mm, yeah, nah, don't like that one. Um, what else you got? So I basically tell my brain, I don't like that thought, next. Mm-hmm. And waiting for the next thought, like a page in a book. Or like, you know, those, um, those doors that circle around and you can go in and then go out and the door never stops. You're just waiting. You're just, mm-hmm, next, control. I have control over that, right? So we have control over that. And this is a little, little tip, little trick that you can try at home if you're getting in your head and out of your body is just tell your brain what to do. Tell your brain, I don't like that thought. I want the next thought. Give me the next one. Nope, not accepting it. I want another thought. Put another one in there. Um, and you would have heard Julian say this and many others, you know, we have 60,000 thoughts a day. We actually have unlimited thoughts. We only think 60,000 of them. So there, there is, <laughs> there's like, it's like wild. We're like, we always, we're like thinking the same thoughts so much. Like when there's unlimited thought options and yet my brain goes to these thoughts that don't make me feel good. Like what is going on here? So I'm going to take control of that and just flip through. All right. Next. All right. If, uh, let's see what we got here for our zedings. All right. So this one is, um, so this one is, if you're looking at my little slide there, it says, imagine the end of this pandemic. All right, we're gonna do a little mental, a mental um, activity. So imagine the end of this pand pandemic and you're looking back at this time now. So we're three months, we're six months, we're nine months, we're whatever, a year, whatever it is, we're into the future. The pandemic's over, the world is healing, your country or wherever you are, your city, um, people are on the streets again, you know, you can hug, you can hug someone like you're back at work or you're back doing things, socializing. And you're sort of back to normal life, if you will. And you're like, hmm, and you're just looking back at your pandemic experience and you're going, hmm. So the pur purpose of this is to sort of zoom out of this mess that we're in right now. So we just zoom out, we take a breath and we just tap into that energy of thinking, hmm, okay, I'm gonna look, look back now and just think about, and here's, here's my question for you. If you're looking back, if, you could, if we could strategically get the most out of this time, so you're looking back and you're going, if I could strategically get the most out of that time, what would that look like? So I'll write that down. So I have a thank or you can put comments in. I can't see any comments. So I don't know if I'm, if I've messed something up or what I've done. So if you're commenting and I'm not saying anything, um, it's not you. It's, um, yeah, that I can't see. So, all right. So if we could strategically get the most out of it, what would it look like? So you're, you're going back and looking at your pan, pandemic experience and you're going, hmm, okay. So we have that choice now, right? So here's my question. If, we, if you could strategically make this time, if you could capitalize on it, what would you do? What would you see? What would you feel? What do you see when you look back and, you're, and it's you like thriving or it's you like getting shit done, you know, getting stuff done? Um, what would you accomplish? Who would you connect with? 
Um, how would you grow? Uh, what could you, what would you create? You know, have a think about this. So I'm, I'm capitalizing on it as I know it now. Okay. I'm at the end. I'm looking, what would, what would I be doing? How would I be cap capitalizing on it? Um, so like for me, so, cause I did this earlier and I was thinking, hmm, that's a good question, Gunkelman. And I was like, I'd really like to take the time right now to really hone in on my morning and nightly routines. So really just, you know, just owning that and really having an amazing dedication and just ramping that up. So I was like, yep, that's going to be one of my little things. Um, I'd like to think that during this time where we're like sort of in isolation that um, my wife and I have really connected even deeper and that our relationship's grown, right? So that's one of my things. Um, exercise. So it's like so easy to just fit exercise in the day, you know? It's just like, I would love to have come out on the other side of this, you know, stronger, leaner, fitter, all that kind of stuff, healthier. Um, something else that I and, um, I, when I was thinking, I was like, hmm, if I could capitalize, I would, I really want to take this time during isolation to tap into my creativity, you know, and, and create content and take inspired action and things like that. So I'm like, yeah, that gets my juices flowing. So that's what I want you to do. Imagine you're at the end and think about if I could capitalize on this time, what would I see? What would I do? What would I, what would I have done? What would I have experienced? What would I have learned? Who would I have connected with? All right. Cool. Um, so I really want to get these comments because I don't even know if they're, um, like talking to me or what's happening. I'm just going to do a test. Hello. See if I can get them to come up again. Ah, they've come up. Mary Fleet's watching. Hey girl. <laughs> okay. So. If you just join, hit my zines link. It's at the top. Um, it's my live presentation so you can get a bit of a visual as we move through. All right, so here we're gonna move into um, how can we position ourselves to flourish? So this is the, I want us to really get into thinking about if I was gonna flourish during this time, how can I position myself? So ask yourself this question now. How can I, how could I position myself emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, so that I put myself in the best in the best position possible to flourish during this time. Okay. So for example, um, so like when I say position, what I mean is it, you, you're giving yourself the best chance to flourish. You're doing things, you're shifting things, you're changing things, give you the best chance, chance to flourish. All right. So for example, um, so let's, let's start with emotions. So if you could position yourself emotionally um, to just freaking flourish, what would those emotions be? So um, like what, 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 I'm just reading my notes, sorry. Yeah, what would we want to what we want to do is access those feelings. So if we can get our emotions in a particular position where those feelings are there, the quality of our daily emotional experience. I mean, that's simple enough. If, I'm, if I wake up grumpy and I'm mad all day, I've had a crappy day. If I wake up and I'm feeling great and I'm have have a really lovely day, I have a lovely life, right? Simple. So think about that. Like, what are the emotions? So you know, feeling happy, feeling calm, feeling excited, feeling loved. Like if I could have those emotions and if you're with me and, and actually doing some of this stuff, like write these down because when we get things out of our head, my, my manifestations, like I'm always writing, you know, it's just that getting that out. So and I wrote these down earlier too for myself because it'll, it'll help give you a little bit of structure. So you can write down, these are the emotions. If I had these emotions, bam, I, I would be in a good position to flourish. So then I want you to think about um, if you could position your mind mentally to flourish, what are the thoughts that you'd have? So um, for example, what, okay, and what would those thoughts be? So thoughts of like in my mind, I'd be like, I can, I can do this. 
a thought of like, it's going to be okay. A thought of, you know, the universe has my back. God, um, Mother Earth, whomever, whatever resonates with you there, you know, has got my back. Um, you know, those thoughts put me in a position, yeah, so that, yeah, I'm going to flourish. So what, what are those thoughts for you? What thoughts position you and help you to just, yeah, I'm in a good space. So write those down. Um, so if you could position your life physically to flourish, what would that look like? So for this one, if you imagine your body, right? So if your body is in a good position, meaning like it's well rested, it's healthy, um, it's strong, it's flexible, your body is, is in a great position to flourish, right? So write those things down for you, stuff in there. And we meditate in there and we do yoga in there and we just do our sort of spiritual journaling. We've also did a room over here um, where we've just made it into like an office. So we've got a real cool desk in there. So it, and it, it's helped so much. And I did this when I was teaching um, and I found it helped. So it's like when I was up at the front of the class and I was sort of standing there and I was like, you know, blah, blah, blah. It was like, it was like the learners in the room were like, oh, Emily's, Emily's on a monologue. So I'm just going to listen in. Right. Question. You know, and then if I was like kind of, you know, walking behind them, then they knew that that was, hey, Christy, hey, girl. Um, then we, they knew, oh, we're, we're in work time. So Emily's going to come around and help. So yeah, I need to get to work. So based on where I was positioned in the room, help my learners to, to be able to relax and not be distracted. And that's the idea of having had positioning your physical life is you don't want to have distractions. So the idea is less distractions, more productivity, right? So if I'm thinking about, if my learners were think, having all these questions about like, oh, we don't know what's going on, but if I can re relieve some of those distractions, if you can relieve some of those distractions at home and have a spot, like this is where, um, this is where I exercise. This is my spot for this or whatever. What could you do in your space that would position yourself to flourish? So what's, what's in there right now that's a bit cluttery or just not working for you, right? So, um, Cool. And then lastly, if you could position yourself spiritually to, to flourish, um, what would that look like? So is that like prayer before you go to bed? Is that like reading some, some spiritual words or what is that in your life? So all of these things, you add all these things up, your feelings, your thoughts, all these things, and you've positioned yourself. You've got the thoughts that are on point, the emotions that are on point. You've got your physical environment on point, your spirituality. Yep. Yeah. If I get all these things going, I'm going to be in an amazing position to, you know, move forward. So if, if you might notice some gaps in there, this will just give you a gentle little movement towards, okay, cool. Here's maybe the next things that I can to be, to flourish during this time, like emotionally, like, whoa, like I have a lot of emotions right now. It's crazy. Um, that's like a tough one, you know, and then you're thinking like my thoughts are going, you know, are challenging sometimes and I'm feeling stressed, you know, so that's a tough one. Um, and here's my, here's my strategy for us. So, and I'm just going to keep this real simple is self-leadership. So in order for me, in order for us to really position ourselves with all of this going on in the world and everything that we're dealing with, but we want to sort of get ourselves in the best place possible so that we can be the, our best self and have the best experience possible. Um, we need to be able to lead ourselves right? So the idea here is that if we have the ability to hold ourselves to account and own our word to ourselves and show up and take action and be present, then we can get these things done. So a little trick. Um, so I was just going to take a quick poll and see who's on. And if you're on ZDeans, you can just take this poll. Um, is on a scale of one to five, um, how often do you follow through on your own word to yourself? So if you say, I'm going to do this in the morning or I'm going to do this workout or whatever, on a scale of one to five, where would you say you sit um, with that? So I'll just put up the poll on Zedings, see if I get any little bites. So one being like almost never and five being like 
almost always, like I have high standards. I'll, I always follow through on my word. It's a non-negotiable. Cool. All right. So the idea here, guys, is, um, is um, being impeccable with your words. So this is my little self uh, leadership for you guys is the first thing that we can do is look at, I mean, how much do we honor the, our word to ourself? Are we good at that? Is that something we can, we can improve on? Oh, hey, Vanessa, what's up, girl? Um, I've got a Zedin's link um, if you want to click on it. We can't like lead anything else. So, so this is why it's so important that we show up when we say we're gonna show up. To other people, come on girl, to ourselves. So if I say to myself, like, and I've been doing, actually check this out, it's on my fridge, I've got this little, um, I've only done it for two days, ah, but I did my things today. So that's my little, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, like we're making progress, um, is I'm showing up, that's my little workout one, so it's like, I just have to do this for myself. I have to love myself enough to show up because I'm, lo I'll lo I'm losing momentum. And, you know, we thrive on being proud of ourselves, you know, like, as humans. Like, if we're out there doing stuff and kicking goals and all of that, like, we thrive on that. We, we we're proud of ourselves and we go, yes, I can do this. Like, yes, I, 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 sh I did my workout or I did my meditation. And it's like, I'm doing things that I know are gonna position me to flourish. And that makes me feel good about myself. And that gives me confidence and all these good feelings, right? So be impe being impeccable with your word. That is my self-leadership tool to you. Nice and short and sharp. Um, and if we're struggling with this, one, one way to sort of leverage ourselves, I guess, catapult us into kind of helping us to make this important is if you think about like what happens if I if I if I'm not impeccable with my word let's say I just don't do anything I say I'm gonna do and where does that lead me and just go go down that path you're like well okay well then I just like well, I lose all fitness I lose all motivation my relationship goes to crap everything goes to crap and then basically I'm just ending down here in like the gutter and if you think about the gutter and you're going, well, I don't want to be in the gutter. So don't take that first step. It's almost like you look and you're like, damn, like that is not good. I don't not want to go in that direction. So I'm going to go in that direction. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the other thing too is you're worth it, right? So you're worth it. So come on, you got this. Like, yes, I'm worth it. I got this, you know? Being impeccable, you can do this, step up. And that's all those things that we went through about how to position yourself emotionally, spiritually, physically, uh, mentally. So if we're lagging in any of those areas and then you go to make yourself like a little mini goal and go, okay, I really wanna be better mentally, right? I'm gonna use that strategy and just flip through my thoughts and what Emily told me, yep. And, and the, the minute you start doing that and having wins and creating a habit around that, you're gonna feel so good about yourself. Come on, we got this. All right, now, next one. Um, strategies for ISO challenges. So I think this is my last little bit here for you guys. Um, so my question to you is what are your isolation challenges right now? What are you guys facing? Like shoot them out. Um, what do you got? What's been the biggest challenges for you? Is it just, is it, um, everything's online? Is it, you know, I can't go get, get a beer with my mates. Is it, um, I'm, you know, struggling just being in the same walls all the time. Hey, hey girl. Hey, Daniel. You know, what is it? So, um, all right. So a little trick that I have, um, for you guys here is, um, so strategies for forming strategies for overcoming these sort of isolation challenges. So. I've just lost my connection in Zedings, but it'll come up and you'll see it there. Um, number one is forming good habits. Okay, so obviously we've got time to form ourselves some good habits, get ourselves in a flow right now. So a little tip that I, I picked up from um, James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. This one I thought was awesome. So it's really easy. It's called stacking. That's what he called it, stacking. So I'm going to stack a habit. So let's say, um, 
let's say you've got a little physical goal of, you know, I want to help like tone up my legs or something. And you're like, okay, cool. So what habit do I already have? Well, I brush my teeth every day. So I'm already doing that. So I already brush my teeth in the morning and at night. So while I'm brushing my teeth, I'll just stack a habit on top of that habit that I already have and just add a habit in. So it's easy. So while I'm brushing my teeth, I'll just do a wall sit. Okay. Now I'm doing a wall sit for 30 seconds, a minute, having my whole routine tip upside down. Right. Right? Totally. So we want to create new habits. We want to create new routines. So whatever habits we already have, we just stack a new habit on top of it that makes it easy for us to remember, simple enough for us to do, keeps it bite-sized, gives us that little bit of momentum that I was talking about so we get we're feeling good about ourselves, we're feeling proud of ourselves, you know, and we're getting a bit of that buzz, and then we just keep moving on all these different areas of our lives to give us that foundation to position ourselves in all these ways to get, um, to flourish. All right, I'm back in. So if you're watching it on zines, I've got it up now. So that's called habit stacking. I thought that's cool. So that's easy. Forming new habits, right? All right. So another strategy for overcoming these challenges that we're having right now during isolation is um, I like to just think of it as being less in our mind and more in our body, right? So we want to we move away from thinking and move towards feeling. So when we're in our head, and what I mean by that is just we're like, um, analyzing the future or we're in a we're worrying or we're thinking about money or we're thinking, uh, about, um, you know, some, some, like all these things that we were supposed to do and we didn't do and we feel guilty and all these things and our, our mind is, is getting away from us because we're in our head and we're out of our body. So we're out of our body. We're in our head. So what, what a little strategy is we want to move from our head and just into our body. So the first thing is just to be able to have the ability to just recognize when you're out of your body. When am I just in my head? And you'll know because you can feel it. Cause it, fe- if the, the, it doesn't feel good. Like you, if you're in worry, you start to just, you know, you get a tight chest and you just start to feel like, uh, and, uh, you know, you can, it's emotional. Your thoughts, they're connected. So as soon as you get those sort of feelings, you know that your mind is, is going away from you. And you can use that, that concept I said earlier, or just tell your body, mm, new thought, please. Mm-hmm. Waiting, waiting till I get a thought that I like. Thank you very much. Cause I'm in control of my mind and we want to drop into our body. So if, if we recognize this, the first thing to do, cause we're always gentle with ourselves, right? We're just, hum- we're just human beings. Come on. We're human beings we're on our journey. We're all experiencing this journey together, but we're on our journey. We're doing our best. And we're just going to be gentle with ourselves and we're going to grow. It's going to be great. So first thing we do is we just take a pause and you just go, yep, I recognize my ego is going crazy. I'm in my mind. I'm not in my body. That's okay. Now I'm going to, I'm going to get back into my body. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a pause, take some breaths. Drop in. Yep. I'm going to feel it in my body. I'm going to drop my soul into my body, through my, through my throat, into my body, down to my toes, and just come home, come home to a place of love and call myself. So, and this is about being in the present moment, is it not? When we're in our head, we're thinking about, we're judging things, we're normally living in the past, we're judging what we did, we're feeling guilty, we're judging These things haven't even happened and we're thinking about the future and it's creating all these situations that haven't even happened yet. So that's us being out of our body. So we can go, "Mm, I'm out of my body. Okay. I want to come home and be in the present moment and feel the earth under my feet. Right. And look around and see the things I'm grateful for and see the beauty in the world and all the miracles that are happening right now. So this is just a, a, a way to just get out of our head into our body. That's the main one. And so that's what I'm practicing all the time. And I'm, 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 I'm strengthening it every day. Um, it's everything. It's everything. It gets me my energy. I'm feeling love. Um, cool. So the last thing I have for you guys, my last little uh, strategy for, um, you know, flourishing during these ISO challenging times is 
big rocks versus small rocks. So it's just a little time strategy, little project management strategy way of thinking. You, a lot of you probably heard. So they go, oh, look at this. And then they pour it all out and then they do it again, right? Hey D, yeah girl. And then they do it again and they, they put the big rocks in first instead of the, the sand. And then they put the little rocks or the medium rocks in and then they pour the sand in and then the sand like goes all the way in and it can fill up, go girl, thank you. Um, and then it can fill up the whole thing and it doesn't overflow. And that little jar represents time. but not really cleaning anything, just like moving something from here to there and being like, oh, that looks cleaner. So it's clean. Um, so big rocks versus small rocks. So if, if life starts to feel overwhelming, number one, you're in your, in, your, in your head, right? So drop into your body. And number two, go, okay, that's cool. Um, what are the big rocks? Let me just focus on the big things that make the biggest impact. So, well, I got a shower. I mean, it's been three days in isolation, so that's a big rock. I need to take that box, right? Um, a big rock could be, you know, feeding yourself or whatever. Or a big rock could be, you might have, have some, some sort of project you need to get, get onto. You go, you know what, that's, I'm gonna do that first. And again, when you do this and you give yourself that gift of focusing on the big rocks, again, you're feeling proud of yourself. Cause you're like, yes, I'm killing it at life right now. I'm not getting caught up in the sand. I'm doing the big rocks first and then I'll put some medium rocks in there, little, little things. And then I got time for the sand. This sand, right? Um, and that about wraps it up, y'all. So I just want to say thanks for coming. And now after just listening to this, I hope that you've got something out of it. Um, give yourself some love. Give yourself some love and um, yeah, this is a unique time. So remember to be, be grateful for you. Be grateful for how and it's, it's sharpening us all in different ways. Hey Mish, it's sharpening us all in different ways. It is affecting us all in different ways and we are um, all coming to that in, a, in our own unique way. So we can be kind with ourselves, we can be gentle with ourselves and allow that space and hold that space for ourselves to make mistakes, to grow, to come out of our head, go back into our body, right? And go, I'm doing okay, all right? Yep, and we can be better today than we were yesterday, right? We can just keep moving forward because if we're not growing, we're dying. So we're always growing, we're always learning. And that's just life, like, and then we die one day. So there you go. I know it's kind of morbid, but it works for me. I often um, think about that. It's like, you know what, someday I'm just gonna be gone. So what am I waiting for? <laughs> All good, thanks, Rach. I'm, I'm glad anybody got something out of it. So here's my love to you. Love, love, love you. Sending love, sending all of this. This is in a unique and amazing time. Out of all of you, you're doing great. Keep up the good work and um, stay connected to this community because it's amazing. And we can all just keep lifting each other up. Much love, peace out.